Welcome to Best Practices Weekly. Most teachers I know have a math tub in their classroom library full of books that they use to help students connect to math concepts. Today we'll look at an article that shows us how one teacher is using multicultural literature to develop an understanding of math concepts and also an appreciation for other cultures. Teaching Mathematics Through Multicultural Literature can be found in the March 2014 edition of Teaching Children Mathematics. The basis for this article lies in the fact that a lot of times when we're teaching difficult mathematical concepts or mathematical concepts to students who um, are struggling with math, giving them a story to tie those concept to, concepts to can help them connect math to their world. And using multicultural literature to do so encourages a diverse understanding of the cultures in our world and how math connects us all. The article tells the story of a first grade um, ESL classroom, and that's a classroom for students who are um, English as a second language. And so the teacher um, wanted to use the book My Granny Went to Market Around the World Counting Rhyme. Um, but before she chose the book, we looked at what the focus was. And so they found a book that would help fit the focus of building upon counting mastery. And through this book, she was actually also able to use um, the tally marks. So there was a skill that she built in. They did um, data tracking throughout the story. At the end, they interpreted their data and the teacher was able to build on the interest and curiosity that the students had in other countries. There were just a whole host of skills that um, the students were able to practice and grasp a hold of through the use of My Granny Went to Market. So the way we'll divide this lesson up to study it today is pre-reading activities, during reading activities, and post-reading activities. And as part of her pre-reading activity, the teacher um, found some vocabulary words that would relate to the story that she felt were essential that the students understood. So she had um, chosen consumer and goods, and those would be words that most first graders would not have um, very much of a grasp on. So they related um, consumers and goods to their own world, talking about trips to the grocery store. Um, and then she and the students drew a T-chart. So um, the students each had a T-chart in front of them where they put goods on one side. And on that side, they would draw pictures of the goods that the grandmother purchased on the trip. Um, through the book and then on the other side were the total number of goods that grandma purchased of each one and they used tally marks to track those totals. Students worked as the teacher read the book to fill in the t-chart that they had created. So on the one side under goods they would draw a picture of what granny purchased and on the other side under total they would use tally marks to show how many goods um, granny purchased. So pretty soon they discovered a pattern that she, of the first good she purchased one, of the second good she purchased two, of the third she purchased three, and so on. So they stopped to talk about that and then worked to confirm that that was true. The teacher also stopped to, to start, she made observations about the countries and she gave students a chance to make observations about the countries. And students started comparing the countries to each other, um, their similarities and differences, and then also to our um, country. So, a lot of opportunity to talk about different cultures and the multicultural aspect of the book during the read aloud. And a few different things happened after the story was completed. The first thing they did was interpreted the data. They figured out as a class how many total tallies did they have. And so that gave students a, a chance to practice counting in different ways. Some counted by fives, some counted um, by ones all the way through, some grouped together some ones to make another bundle of five. So a lot of interesting math talk and strategies came from that. Um, they created number sentences as a class with missing add-ins. There are just so many ways that you can interpret data off of a t-chart. But then students also had a chance during that discussion and time together to defend their reasoning skills for answers that they gave. And we know with the Common Core State Standards, we want students to be able to explain their thinking and to be able to defend their answer um, in a way that helps us understand how they're thinking about math in their heads, that kind of math talk that they're doing. So a lot of opportunities for that came after the story was over using the data that each student had in their t-chart. The after reading assessment really ties together all of the skills that the teacher worked on um, 
before the story and during the story and after the story and give students a chance to um, add their own interest into it. They were to choose a country that they would visit and write about what goods they would purchase and how many of, of each good they would purchase and then the total number of goods. So they're kind of creating their own t-chart based on their own interest level um, regarding which country they would visit. I guess a lot of the students from the book chose Japan. That was a really interesting one to them. But this really gives students a chance to tie together using tally marks, interpreting data, writing number sentences, um, together with using what they learn about the world through this multicultural book. Looking at how we can take this best practice back to our classroom, I think it's important to remember that there are so many opportunities to incorporate multicultural text into math. Um, it is a best practice that can help us integrate the universal language of math with a way of understanding and appreciating other countries. It can also help students match a narrative to difficult math concepts that they're struggling with. And we've talked about that in previous episodes and even in some of the earlier slides of this episode, that when students are struggling with abstract concepts in math, giving them a story that can help them connect that to their real life can really help them understand that concept. So that is the best practice that I know that we can all take back and use in our classroom. And finding multicultural text to do that um, should not be hard because there are a wealth of those out there. So I hope that you will put this best practice to use in your classroom. Thanks for joining us.